What is up, gentlemen? Welcome back to another episode on the channel. On today's episode, we'll be looking at courage. What is it and how we can cultivate and build courage in our day-to-day -day lives through small and through big actions. Ultimately, we need to look at what courage is, right? This age-old concept, this mythical idea that exists somewhere in reality and in fiction. Something that we see on our screens, we read in our books, and we hear through age-old tales. How can we, in this modern day in life, cultivate courage in our day-to-day -day lives? Well, this is exactly what I want to discuss on today's episode. What is courage and what is courage not? Well, courage is essentially not the absence of fear, but courage is the understanding that fear is a natural phenomenon of life. To embrace fear, to understand that we will all feel fearful at some point. There are going to be things in our day-to-day -day basis that are going to trigger this idea of fear in us. The idea that we don't want to do something, that we want to shy away from something. Courage is the acceptance of that, but it is doing the opposite of what our inclinations tell us to do. So understanding that courage is not the absence of fear, but it is the acknowledgement of fear and the doing of what you need to do regardless of that fear or not. So how does one cultivate courage? What are the stepping stones towards building and living a more courageous life? I believe that number one, it is so important to understand that Fear is a natural part of life. Identify your fears and choose to confront them. Understand that your fear is a barrier to anything and everything that you wish to achieve in your life. It is the barrier towards greater financial success. When you tell yourself that you plan on starting a business or going into a partnership or starting a new venture, the fearful part of you goes through everything and anything that can possibly go wrong. You start to list out in your head every reason why this specific thing that you wish to achieve can't work. And that's the fearful part of you talking. Understand that this fear is a natural part. It's a natural phenomenon. It's our way of protecting ourselves. It's our way of living or choosing to survive and to live into the next day. Sure, that may be a part of our biological programming, but the same reason that that fear exists is also the reason that we should try to overcome it. On the other side of that fear, is the understanding and is the reality that everything we could ever want can be achieved. So identify those fears and choose to actively confront them. Choosing to take that first step to write that book, to set up that LLC, to reach out to that person is a courageous effort in and of itself. Most people think of courage as these large acts of heroism, as the acts that we hear of on the TV or through our TV shows or in the books that we read. But courage can be cultivated in the smallest ways. There's courage happening all around us. You've been courageous in more ways than you haven't. This is the idea that courage is not something that we put up on a pedestal. It's something that we build day in, day out through these small actions that we do that eventually spiral into the person that we must become. Number two, when cultivating courage is understand and use fear as a motivator. Fear should tell you that there is something beyond the door that is worth exploring. It's our way of identifying that there's something special there. Whether this is good or bad, we will discover. So use fear as a motivator. Use fear as a way to ignite yourself into action. When you feel that tinge of fear, this should be a clear indicator to yourself that there's something that is worth exploring there. From there, look at what will happen if you choose not to take action. Most people look at fear and they start to look at the consequences. What if this happens? What if this happens? What if this happens? They look at all of the doomsday scenario options that can potentially occur, but they fail to look at what are the consequences if you choose to take no action? What are the consequences of not choosing to live in a healthy way? What are the consequences of not choosing to quit smoking? What are the consequences of not choosing to get more mentally aligned with yourself? Where will you be in 10 years, in 20 years? What is the outcome of this repeated actions? Even if you're avoiding fear in the immediate, what does your life look like in 30 years when you haven't quit smoking? when you're potentially at the risk of a high level of lung cancer, when you're unable to walk up a flight of stairs, when you're unable to play with your kids. That is the fear that should be motivating. So understand that the consequences of your fears are way bigger and way more detrimental than the fears themselves. Then you must look at your unique scenarios. These situations that are causing you to feel this fear are essentially challenges in your life. Every single fear motivating situation that has ever occurred to you is a unique opportunity for you to get better. Think of choosing to step into the boxing ring for the first time, looking at the person right in front of you and knowing that this person can inflict damage to you. This is a fear provoking situation, but on the other side of that sparring session 
is the opportunity for a heightened sense of self, a heightened sense of reflexes, more agility, more self-confidence. Simply by choosing to overcome and to confront those fears, the upside on that negative or that sharp pain that you may feel initially is massive upside. This is what happens when you choose to overcome and to look at your fearful challenges as things that make you better, make you stronger. Three, you must train yourself and you can train yourself to be courageous. Courage, just like willpower, is something that you can train into yourself. Courage, as we discussed in the beginning of this episode, is not the absence of fear, but it's the acknowledgement of fear and the acting against those natural impulses. Anyway, choose to practice overcoming fear in small scenarios first and foremost. Every single situation in which you feel a small sense of fear, whether it's choosing to make that phone call, maybe the stakes are low, but you still have that sense of fear, whether it's choosing to attend that class, or reach out to that person. Choosing consciously to overcome that fear reinforces in your subconscious, in future events, that you are able and capable of handling the outcome on the other side of that fear. So this is one way of building up resilience on a day-to-day -day basis and to become more courageous. Also, understand that you must embrace both moral courage and physical courage, because there's two types of courage. You can have the physical sense of courage, this is the walking home alone at night and knowing that you're able to protect yourself and to take care of yourself in a scenario. This is the choosing to go bungee cliff diving. This is the understanding that you'll be willing and ready to step into the boxing ring. But on the other hand, and a little bit more difficult to cultivate is the moral courage. This is the ability to take the right decision, to make the right call, to put your foot down when you need to put your foot down, regardless of the consequences, regardless of what may people may say about you, regardless of if you lose that deal, if you don't make that money, if that person walks away. This is moral courage. And honestly, moral courage is much more difficult to cultivate because the effects of moral courage and the rewards, the potential rewards that you gain from being courageous in those moments are much more drawn out than something such as a physical courage. You can notice the effects and the impact of attending the gym in that morning session. You get a endorphin rush immediately after you finish your, your gym session. But making that hard call, making that difficult call to lay that person off or choosing to go a different direction with your business, that is a much more difficult and much more morally tantalizing question that you must ask yourself. And the effects are not immediate and the outcomes are not always in your favor. You could make the right moral and courageous decision, but throughout your entire life, you may not be viewed in that moral and righteous way. And you must be willing to accept that. Number five, we can build courage by choosing to stand on the shoulders of giants, by choosing to learn from those who have come before us, by choosing to learn from historical figures who have displayed tremendous bouts of courage. We can use them as examples, as shining examples to guide ourselves, to use them as a motivator. Some great examples from history that we can all relate to in moments of physical and moral courage. A good example is the 300 Spartans that stood at the high pass of Thermopylae against a Persian army that far outnumbered the 300 Spartans that stood that day. What they teach us is the ability to do what is right against all odds and knowing that we could lose what we value most, which is our lives in the pursuit of that courage. Most of us will never have to be put in that position. But if 300 men could do this all of those years ago and their tale of courage and bravery stands true today, then why not use that to give us a little bit of a spring in our step to be more courageous, to be more morally righteous? Why not use those examples of people before us and to see that it's been done before on these grand scales? That should motivate us, that should get us thinking of what is possible if we just took that first step, if we did that first thing. A great example of moral courage is that of the French general Charles de Gaulle. Charles de Gaulle was the single person who reunited France after the fall of France in the Second World War. In 1940, when the Germans overtook Paris and we saw the fall of France as we know it today, there's a single person that chose to build France up from the ashes chose to believe in the country that he had grown up in and chose to never give up on the place of his birth. And this was Charles de Gaulle. Charles de Gaulle was not an easy man to get along with, but he was a righteous man and he was a brave man. He escaped to Britain and through the years of 1940 to 1945, he did everything within his power to rally the Allied side against the Germans, to rally the French together, to maintain French resistance, and to do what he believed was right. Even though people from his own government, through the Vichy Republic of France, had chosen to surrender, had chosen to brand him a traitor, and to demand his head 
He did what he felt was right, and he fought for France, and he fought for the country he believed in. This is an example of moral courage. Number six, be willing to embrace heroism. Heroism is a special type of courage, one that I've touched on very, very briefly in this episode. Who is the hero? What is the hero's tale? Ultimately, the hero is the person who does what he needs to do without the expectation of things coming favorably into his mix, into his destiny. It is the 300 Spartans that chose to lay down their lives for the protection of Greece. It is Charles de Gaulle leaving France in the middle of the night, choosing to come back, choosing to unite his people together against the Axis forces. It is the understanding that you could give up everything and you could lose everything and things regardless of how much effort you put in, how much you pushed yourself, how far you're willing to go, that things don't necessarily need to work out for you. But this is the hero's tale. This is how we as men and as women even can identify specific unique opportunities to be heroic in our day-to-day -day lives. It is the father who chooses to maintain a consistent stoic sense of self day in day out for years and years and years on end to protect and to provide for his family. It is the hero in an office setting that chooses to take up and to pick up the burden, to pick up the slack for his teammates, to be willing to be present for them without any expectation of anything in return and whether or not he or she is recognized for that. We can all be heroes in small or big ways on a day-to-day -day basis. We must appreciate that side of ourselves. We must understand that that side of ourselves is a way of being. It's a way of us achieving a greater sense of self. We look at heroism as those grand tales, as these mythological events that may happen on a day-to-day -day basis, but heroism can be so much more simple and it can be so much more humble. Be willing and be ready to cultivate acts of heroism every single day. They're all around us. Last but not least, be willing to develop courage as a virtue. When we choose to look at courage as a virtue, we choose to embody courage in every single thing that we do, in every action we take, in every word we say. We can be courageous in the big things and we can be courageous in the small things. To achieve our destiny, to get the things we wish to get in life, to have a life that we feel is fulfilling and one that has been worth living. We must use courage as a way to overcome our fears and to move into the things that are truly meaningful to us. Courage is a virtue. Courage is not something that we just hear about in the newspapers. It's not something that we hear about from our neighbors. It's something that we and every single one of us can embody within ourselves. It is a truly internalized thing that all of us have the capability of doing, no matter how much we've achieved and no matter how little we achieve. The garbage man can be courageous. The CEO billionaire can be courageous. The priest can be courageous. No matter who you are in life, you can be courageous on a day-to-day -day basis. And this is the idea of choosing to cultivate courage as a virtue and not only as a vanity metric. We're not courageous because we want others to see us courageous. We want to be courageous because this is a step towards who we were always meant to be. 